Okay, this conversation is about uh, writing, primarily to assist those who would like to begin their writing. And uh, it's addressed to international student gathering, those who have done human services, social work, master's degree, and there are also hopefully some PhD students who are looking at uh, committing themselves to writing. And uh, I'm hoping that I'll be able to bring to your understanding some methodology that over a period of time I built up. So it's all about creative writing because you need to have that creative flavor before you go into any other academic writing. And that's how I believe so. So the purpose of writing is essentially to reflect also on your readings, your observations, any research that you carry on. And the whole process is to assist you to reach a wider audience at the end of the day. So this little workshop that we'll be doing today should assist you in terms of uh, building a standpoint of view of your own to express what is your own uh, reflection and to write about it and in a measured way to deal with your academic rigor and otherwise your creative flourish or your, uh, you know, the basic writing ability that you want to convey. So as this is a beginner's workshop, I anticipate the outcomes for you are going to be rather simplistic. Hopefully they will inspire you. You might make a resolution to write then you would write, of course, will depend upon how much of time you have got and uh, what would you like to write about. And uh, certainly you will begin some writing. Now, I always considered to be boring if you were to finish a degree and then move into a PhD program. You know, that's not the way I would conceive a human services worker, anybody for that matter, to straight away do a PhD just because he cleared an entrance examination or a test or an interview. That for me is a bit of a no-no approach. I would recommend my students world over, irrespective of the distinctions that they have achieved in BSW or an MSW, before you become a writer, a writer, an author in academia, it's always great to advantage yourself, feel for yourself, do some good observations, write about them, and get to shape your feelings. So uh, I think, you know, when you even look at, uh, when you are going through your college days, when you look at the election posters that you try and see, and uh, particularly uh, when you see a poster, and it says, okay, Chetan, just a name, is the best, or your president, or Sarika, just another name, is probably the best for your presidential candidate for your student selection. Even that act of writing a poem, you know, writing a poster involves some creativity. Have you ever written anything at all? I know initially um, some students have expressed that they have written some poems, a short essay, a letter to the editor, a short story, a narrative report, of their fieldwork observations, a blog, or even a powerful message which created a post in the fieldwork practice, which probably brings about awareness or to raise the community's consciousness. You know, these days, a lot of social workers, allied health people, are involved in generating more and more information, awareness about social distancing, about COVID, etc. So those are the kind of things that we would probably need to try and look at in terms of how good and how creative those outputs have been. The question in all creative outputs is, what was it about? What was the punchline? Was it sufficiently motivating? Did it work for you as an individual who tried to do that? Did it work for the community? What were clearly the outcomes? Whether you're writing a fieldwork report, particularly the first fieldwork report, either about a slum that you visited or an agency 
you might have found that task to be challenging, if not daunting. So what, what, when people say to me that they wrote some poetry, did, did some painting, and also you know, wrote some verses and things like that, I do ask them as to what was their inspiration. Whether you are writing a short story, long fiction, poetry or non-fiction, at some point of time in your education, you're likely to be facing a creative challenge, challenge of writing itself. It's a creative writing challenge. Social workers are increasingly asked to write motivational announcements for their campaigns, write reports, submissions to get some grants. Social workers also are asked to involve themselves in short commercials, video productions of messages that will build awareness and bring about change. So, when you think about why you want to write a paper, the next question, of course, is when you think about why you want to write a paper, there are plenty of resources that you can get on the internet these days. There's plenty of tips that add power to your creative thoughts, even for exams and essays. Some think creative writing is easy. Once you begin, you will know that it isn't that easy. Trust me, many PhDs, academics, academics from South Asian descent, they write to me asking me, sir, I do want to write a paper. Can you guide me? My genuine questions to them are, have you written anything before? What do you want to write about? Have you read uh, anything that has been written before? What do you want to write? Have you read the journal that you want to write in? Have you read any other journal that is like or similar to what you want to write? Have you written in any other language before? Have you written a letter to the editor, newspaper, anywhere? Did you ever comment on anything that is occurring around you? These are very, very important things for me to see whether there is a creative instinct that you have and how you are nurturing that instinct. Then, of course, the questions are, what was your PhD topic? Have you published anything out of it as an article or as articles? Who published them? Are you prepared to write to a local journal? It's important to write even to a local journal. Something that is not in the university grants commissions list or some such big list that you need to look for. No, sir, it doesn't. It doesn't have recognition. That's what they tell me. I need Scopus journals or from the Web of Science database. That's the kind of attitude and mood at which people want to talk to. It's an ideal that you want to reach. But before that, you need to write something. You need to grow in a systematic way. And that's something that people are not ready to achieve. People generally lose out on the entire writing ability just because they want to aim so very high. And unfortunately, that is not something that's coming immediately in their way. So research writing, again, is a critical skill for both college classes as well as for any job. My submission is that before you begin some serious academic writing, show your feelings. Enjoy creative writing. It can even bring you joy. It could even become a rewarding craft. Certainly, this doesn't come easy. It requires good observation, contemplation, reflection, and then putting words to your pen. So that's why I talk about observations. What do you observe left, right, and center when you go in a train, when you pass through the bus, when you're driving? Of course, you have to concentrate more on driving rather than observe left, right, and center. But certainly, you need to observe even when you're driving so that you don't commit an accident. So begin. 
If you believe somehow you're still nervous about creative writing and you feel it's, it isn't your cup of tea, that it is not part of your comfort zone, Google about creative writing tips. You'll get plenty when you are certain. The two important elements that I want to make sure that you get them today and tomorrow is firstly, I will address creative writing and then how to read and reflect on an article and perhaps summarize them for the future. Rule number one, if you don't read, you can't write. You must read if you really want to write. Yeah, you must sit down at any time and having never read a poem, write a book of poetry or write a novel out of thin air. But here's the thing, you'll probably be horrible. You must read if you want to be a good writer. If not a great writer, it's my conviction that even if you aim to be moderately decent writer, you need to get some idea of what you should be doing. You must first consider what has been done, why it has been done, why people are doing something different at this point of time. Also, my recommendation is don't restrict yourself to one single medium or style. You needn't look for a plot to begin somewhere. Don't think you need to produce anything in comparison to Indians, that fantastic writer, Aravind Adiga, the white tiger, which is now being produced into a, a movie or become a Chetan, An, Chetan, Chetan Bhagat. I'm sure both started somewhere and began seeking feedback as a group and produced more and more. Above all, they read more. A good author reflects not only his by the reader's emotions, your universe is mirrored in your own words. Start looking through journals, magazines and blogs. Discover what you want to do, what other people are writing and publishing. You need to read them. Take a look at these great online journals. They read the society, they observe, they observe their surroundings. They smell the themes in our society that are itching everybody and began writing and actually gave your words to them. Have you thought about it? The writer gives your feelings, your words reflect your world. Begin exploring journals, magazines and blogs. Find out what you want to do and what people are writing and publishing. Check out many excellent all online journals that are available. Rule number two, certainly conduct research. Conduct your own research. Don't restrict yourself to reading other people's stories or poems. You'll become a peddler of other people's thoughts. Too many people, you know, there's an article of 2000 words and they write about 3,000 words of bibliography and referencing. It's okay to write that. That means you're extremely scientific. You've done a big mega, you know, mega study. You've done a metadata analysis. But the point is, have you said something after that? Is there some beautiful conclusion that you are trying to bring about? Is there a groundbreaking finding that you brought about after reviewing everybody? That's very, very important. Similarly, at the range, look at the range of media for information and ideas that you can use in your writing. Become a budding author by writing out your notes or making your own bibliography of references and reference texts you found useful while reading. Continue. Rule number two, do your research. You may want to follow a similar style of whomever that you have read up to now. There's nothing wrong in that. Eventually, you will evolve your own style. Know that even though you're writing fiction, it must be plausible. It's very, very important to understand that. Now, 
find your own pitch. Don't try to be famous author right away. If you have read Oliver Twist in your childhood, a novel by Charles Dickens, it might inspire you, but they may not necessarily be the theme or style in which you want to write today. Many of those authors, creativity came out in those times, reflecting those very surroundings. So when you say find your own pitch, use today's law, look at what rules by which we play around, what's happening to the world views at this point of time. Don't aspire to be something you are, that you are not right in your own time, in your own culture, and above all in your own voice. Writing is essentially letting your voice come out. If, even if you're writing fictional characters and events, find a style and sound that represents the most genuine version of yourself. It's one of the most critical steps in building your own world of fiction. It's important that there is an element of fiction in your writing. Rule number four, set aside definitely some time for creativity. You can't do it just like that. It's not like coming back from the school when you are a kid at 4.30 and then immediately do the maths assignments because at 5.30 or so the kids come out and you want to play with them. Probably it's better after school to play a bit and then have a wash, have a shower, and then probably think about mathematics. So it's important the way you figure out when you need to be creative, how you need to be working around that. Performances including sculpting, painting, classical music, even bodybuilding necessitates commitment. Give some time to the pursuit on a weekend or, or every day. It is stupid and romantic to think that authors write books just like that after witnessing a stroke of inspiration. There's a lot of effort that writers put in their effort. They follow a fixed structured routine that needs writing and revision. You can't wait for inspiration to appear in your dreams or in your horizon if you want to compose anything. You must put in some effort. Find a routine that works for you. Write it down in your daily planner and stick to it. This will be challenging at first, but the more you do it, the more energy you will gain and the easier it will become. Right. The, the next one, which is a fifth rule, is don't bombast your writing. Don't run to thesaurus and choose the most difficult synonym. Be simple. It's a booby trap to think that if you wrote in difficult English, people would appreciate you. Most of the time, the scripts that I read, I try to check in the dictionary as to what they are meaning and try to find out what's the closest by which they've taken this. All synonyms don't necessarily add up to the same meaning that they ought to be given to you. So you've got to be very, very careful as to why you're using uh, a synonym, uh, you know, when it can be expressed simply, uh, why do we need a fantastic word for it? Simplicity is beautiful by itself. So writing is simple. Simple writing is beautiful. Don't let cleverness get in the way of saying it simply. Lay it bare. Yeah. Don't, you know, ostentations, you know, do not try to cover it up with something else. Obscurity is hateable. If the result was intended, why obscure? Avoid being complicated only for the sake of being complicated. I think these are some of the rules that I want you to understand. That's why I put them all up so that you can always go back to them and try and see. Rule number six, know whom you are writing for. Every piece of writing is meant for somebody. Okay, it can even be for yourself when you are writing. 
Keep this in mind. Consider the following questions. Who are you writing for? Audience is everything. What do you expect them to do with your writing or the plot that you've got? What are you looking to achieve by speaking to the audience? One more thing. If you didn't think of an audience, think about them now. Audience is everything. Actually, this ought to have been the beginning. Never mind. That is a, a very important thing to learn. Number seven, practice and practice writing. Writing is an art and like any other skill, it takes continuous practice if you want to improve. This doesn't mean every day you type up some words into your laptop, keep reading them and see if what you wrote yesterday makes sense today. Sometimes spend the day improving your previous output. It's great to devote some thought towards practice. Rule number eight, reaching out. What do you think? Isn't writing a social activity, a social project? It is. It should give me an idea that you are a lonely bookworm who's reading a few things here and there and writing out of it. Meet others in your class who are writing and engage with those who boldly say and want to become authors one day. The maxim is reach out and reach out. Writing is a social activity. I want to emphasize that statement once again. Encourage your colleagues. Encourage them. Take their private numbers and private email to keep in touch as they, make up, as they may become famous. Encourage them too. Encouragement is infectious. They will watch you too. This is much healthier than the Facebook likes. There is positively no score for any other sentiment. Speak about your own project. Never stop. Become enthusiastic to hear about your colleagues' writing projects. Request them to read while you write and obtain feedback. This is important. They'll share their project with you as well. You build a peer mentor group in this fashion. Share your work and input to others, elders, elder than you. They might be presently surprised that you're pursuing something different. Everyone gets a feedback. Even a cryptic one, feedback is good enough. You show it to them. Show it then to someone else as well. You notice that other begin, you notice that, and others also begin noticing you and ask you a question. What are you writing these days? Make conversations, make a conversation. Attend writing workshops or create one by calling in an expert or a mentor. It will serve as a great opportunity to develop your work alongside others. You begin to share. You begin to critique, you revise, your work and your skills improve. The key is to be open and to take and to treat the creative process as a dialogue. It's not a monologue. Even poetry is not a monologue. If you just wrote it and until somebody asks you, you never read it, that's waste. It's dead poetry. Just dig around on Google and you're likely to find a writing workshop that possibly suits you. Number 10, revise, revise, and revise. It's unlikely that the writing would sound great first time around. You will rarely crash. It provides another chance to rewrite again and again. Yeah, it's time consuming. But it's important part of the process that distinguishes somebody who calls himself as an author from someone who just has it as a hobby. Begin as a hobby and entertain ideas 
that you can become an author one day. Rule number 10, same thing again, continues, revise, revise, revise. The ability to rewrite is something that should be perfected. Take a step back and objectively assess your job. Consider what others have to say and how they can assist you. Prepare to make important revisions in your quest for great literature. Number 11, don't repeat your lines. This is very, very important. This is my classic advice. Something that you are very fond of could be a line, a scene, or a writing abstract again as part of the text in an article. That is a no-no. That is sick, according to me. If you must, you do paraphrase it, but I prefer if you avoided it completely. Number 12, don't discriminate in writing. Write for everyone, anybody. Submit your work for publication. If you want to take your writing seriously, that's the only way. Prepare work for submission. Even just as an exercise can be a satisfying experience because it allows you to take stock of your content, what it's doing, and who is it written for, and all those questions will come back to you once again. If you are just a beginner, the, face, the safest way is to select between four or five different journals or magazines to send your work to. Don't submit all at the same time. Wait for any comments or even a regret letter that might come up from one of them. That's okay to receive regret letter. It's okay to receive many regret letters. Surely you won't make money out of writing unless you write some fiction that gets printed by a Harper Collins or Indian publisher Jayco. Every good writer has several regret letters. I happen to have a lot of rejection letters. Don't abuse the publisher who didn't even read your article. You think he didn't read it and rejected it. One day you will publish. Now, rule which is 13. With 12 I thought I should stop, but then I thought I must also write this. The final rule is don't self-publish if you can. That's my final rule if you can follow until your retirement. Don't self-publish with a backyard printer. Seek reputed publishers. ISBN isn't everything. You need more than that. I'll tell you what you need more than that. A stamp of approval comes from being published in a journal, magazine, or press. No matter how thin, it means you have put in an effort and have been thoroughly vetted, thoroughly seen, read, criticized, critiqued, and then helped out. This can be appealing to actual publishers close to work experience on a resume. Self-publishing suggests that you missed a few steps and lack of track record, lack of track record, which will make it impossible to find someone else publish you later. I think I'll end this conversation here. I'll talk tomorrow about academic writing, mainly how to summarize academic articles. And of course, I'll take up a few questions and continue the dialogue for the day. Thank you very much.